Hello everyone, it is Toby from Toby's Open Sketch and thank you for joining me for another sketching session today. So what we are going to be doing is this rather fun little scene. Um, it's a view across from Valletta in Malta across to the three cities and with this lovely black boat or the black sailed boat sort of sailing its way across. We're going to be using uh, watercolours and a pencil today. I've got a range of brushes, a mop brush, a calligraphy brush, a flat brush and two round brushes and that is all we'll be doing. Um, as ever if you enjoy please do like and subscribe and with that let's get started. So we're going to start with a really loose and gentle pencil sketch. What I'll do actually I'll make it a little bit bolder. This is darker than I'd normally do it but this is so that you can actually to see what I'm what I'm trying to sketch. We better get this boat in early. The boat's going to set the, the scale of the scene in many ways. It's just a small sailing boat but it's got an awful lot of, sort of character with that black sail. And it's very much what this scene is about isn't it? This lovely backdrop of city but really it's this fascinating boat in the foreground. So that's our boat. This pencil mark going through it doesn't matter. And now we can start to just pick out these major details from the background that we're going to be including. There's a lot of lovely shadows going on. You can see because we scaled up that boat we're going to be sort of reducing the amount of city that we get in. We can then start to pick out which bits of scenery we're going to add in and really it's a lot of, sort of flat buildings like this isn't it with shadow and light, shadow and light just repeating and then we've got a few interesting sort of towers in the background and then if we go one more edge along and I'm not saying that this is strictly a 100% accurate sketch but what we can do is just pick out features and make this our own scene and so if we go one edge along we can decide this is the point that this lovely dome can join us in our scene a little dark tower next to it and then just falling off the edge of our composition will be another tower We've got a few bits just poking their heads up. And then just falling off the edge here as well as a few more just the same style of buildings. Which, but they have lovely light and dark sides, don't they? So that's going to be the, the feature of today's sketch, I think. In the water we can just start to get a couple of these shapes. and remind ourselves that there's a little shadow that we're going to get in. And there we are, that's the sketching done, the, the pencil done. I'm just going to save my brushes. Now the next phase is just to get plenty of water on our page. We want it, so we're going to be painting wet on wet and we want the page itself to have absorbed all the water it can handle. So we just scrub the water on And having scrubbed the water on a few times, just letting it soak in. And ideally, maybe you'd leave it for five or ten minutes just to let that soak in. What we're going to do is leave it a couple of minutes. And we just take off the, the surface water. And you can probably still tell that that page is shiny but it's not covered in water so the, the paper itself the fabric is is what's holding all the moisture i'm then going to prop up my page a little bit i like sketching flat but i like painting on an angle Let's just prop that up and we can get started with our colors so we've got this lovely crisp blue sky haven't we so let's start up there. I'm going to use some cobalt and my flat brush. Get a nice rich cobalt colour. 
Do you see how the sky fades? It's almost yellow as it gets down. So we can, we can simulate that with our how we place the colour. We start by just getting a lovely bit of colour just at the top here. Then we can clean off our brush and we can use that just to blend the colour down and it will therefore naturally just fade out towards, towards the, the uh, city. And then we can keep it, just keep a little gap between the sky that we're painting in and the city itself. So that we come and we get this nice clean edge. It's one nice advantage of using big flat brushes, it's very easy to create those clean edges. You might want to create a wispy cloud or something. So you could do that just by taking a clean brush and bringing it through. Let's see how that adds to our scene. The other thing I'd nice to do is just, just soften some of these edges. So we've got this clean edge going all the way along, but we're actually then just going to remove that clean edge in a few places, make it a soft edge, make it the landscape and the sky blend together in places and other places be very separate. I'm going to move on with my blues. I'm going to use the same cobalt. We're going to add some indigo to it. I'm going to end up with a, a deeper blue, a rich deep blue. And that, of course, is going to be in our in our sea. And again, we can take advantage of our big flat brush to create that neat edge but also to create those, already be creating those horizontal patterns that you get with waves. Just have a look at how the tone of the sea varies across the page. And out on these edges, it's a much lighter blue, isn't it? And there's some really long reflections. So this, this, the um, city is reflecting all the way out. Here we can start getting the the concept of the reflection of this boat in. And again, we just want to start defining our boat a little bit with these sharp edges. And we'll just bring in some quinacridone now, which is going to be that lovely golden reflecting um, uh, city. Okay, we've got lots of hard edges going on in this in this sea again, and we can now. I know we've left nice areas of white, but we can do some other areas of white just with that. Um, clean brush and come in and just scoop out some pigment, lift out some light and soften some of these hard edges, leave some of them, adds a lovely texture. And then again as we as we consider where our shadow is going to be we can start washing this blue up, softening it into the into the shadows and again, it just joins things up, simplifies what's going on. See, there's a lovely big shadow coming up here. It's never too early to just start thinking about those shapes and those joins. And again, we can even wash some of the sea into the into the sail and at other places keep it really well defined and sharp. Same in the boat itself. If you look at the edge of the boat, it's not that easy to tell where it begins, where it ends. And let's just add a few more sort of punches of colour to bring out those, that light.
Okay, so how are we doing? As ever, at this stage it always looks a bit uncouth. Not quite necessarily, it feels like you're not quite sure where you're going, but it's all about just trusting the process, trusting that you're, you know what you're doing, and if you don't rush ahead and try and just immediately complete it, you'll probably end up all right. I think we're on the right track. I'm going to start getting some of these lovely light colours. Uh, so quinacridone heavy mix of yellows. And we don't want to overpaint in, in all of here. So we're going to focus on just a few areas. And a few areas which are definitely on the yellow end of the spectrum are these, these lovely walls. We've mapped them out already with little ups and downs. And we can just work our way along. And with watercolour, just try and continually change your wash. So you get these lovely variations just automatically appearing. You don't have to think about them just because you're naturally just changing your wash. And there we go. And we want to keep this crisp edge of the sail. So we can just bring that in nicely with the edge of our flat brush. And we can let it mingle in some places. In other places, it might be nice just to pull it back where it was mingling a bit too much. You can easily pull it back. But these are also going to act as our lovely reflections again. So you might even want to encourage that and pull it down. And again, just go in and look, right, where is there too much colour? Where can we pull out some light? Clean your brush pull that light out, create that lovely Mediterranean feel. And you can see we kept, as we've gone along, we've kept a little bit of boundary between the sea and the walls in a few places. And that's going to let us sort of highlight the differences we can bring those out again in a couple more places. It gives us a bit of texture to work with. And then like before, let's soften some of these edges so we can come in and just let these walls blend up a little bit in places. Okay. Now we're done with the flat brush for a little while. Going to move on. I think we will try our calligraphy brush for a little bit. See how that works. If not, we'll move to the small round brush. And what we want to try and do is get some of these more mellowed yellows, which are in these buildings. So we use the same base, but a little bit of neutral tint. So that'll just literally darken it. And just use that as a very watery mix. And we're going to just dot it around and see how it goes. Try and leave plenty of light. So we're picking out these areas really which have got a little bit more of uh, the shadow. We're going to leave some of our buildings nice and white. Just using a calligraphy brush because it can create a really nice point. Even though it's quite big, it creates a nice point, but it's also going to do its own thing to some extent because it's very soft. So it's a nice balance between being in control and letting watercolour do whatever watercolour decides it's going to do that day. Okay, we can then again just clean our brush off soften some of these edges, keep some of them hard, move things around. Just encourage our colours to move around a little bit. 
Now where we've got this um, sail, we don't want it too dark because we want there to be a really nice sort of comparison between what's going to be a really dark sail and the light going on elsewhere. Okay, so this is starting to get there, isn't it? We've got these big shapes coming in. Again, just washing in light and dark and light and dark. I'm trying to focus on some of these darker darks now, while things are still a bit wet and they're going to to do their own mellowing out thing. This is a nice point of darkness, this tower certainly. We just try and get the idea of those textures which the tower's got in it thanks to all the um, sort of construction going on around it. Okay, it actually comes down a little bit further, so I think we can bring that all the way down. Now I'm going to change to a smaller brush because it's getting a little bit challenging to quite have the control I want. So we're going to a size 8 round brush at this point, and we're sticking with that neutral tint and quinacridone mix. We're still just trying to get some shadows, some loose shadows. And darker shapes but we're still in the wet on wet phase so it's big areas we're going for it's not small details yet we can start I think yep, we're definitely safe here now so we can just start using some, some mixes I've got mute neutral tin bit of perylene violet these colors make for lovely shadows we can use them and just start bringing down shadows from these walls and where's the next shadow so the next bit of shadow is here you might think why on earth would you use violet for a shadow but it's a really lovely color very similar in some ways to moon glow which is a lot of people's favorite color which is itself a mix it's pretty one of the effects it has is this lovely sort of purpley red because it's got some alizarin in it and some ultramarine just softening some of this shadow and then one more shot one more big shadow to go certainly off to this side going to be a slightly different mix again i added a bit of indigo in there make it really quite dark because this is a much more sort of substantial shadow off on this side it actually goes all the way down to the sea there okay we can just wash some texture into our shadows and then start to just bring it along the base so we've dried out now quite a lot so this is where we can start pulling out some really dark tones so along the edge where the rocks are meeting we've got a lot of these really dark specific dark marks haven't we so that's somewhere we can start our journey into really dark contrast we can also use it to highlight where the darkest areas are like in these gaps And then, of course, come in, soften, move, wash things up and down. Okay. So while all of this is doing its thing, drying, 
I think we can move on to just finishing off some of these buildings and this is where we need to stick with these lovely dark tones and be really delicate and just finding a few details I'm still using quite a big brush here a size 8 round but even with that you can really just be so gentle and pull out a few things a few big shadows maybe a couple of little roof details and again despite it being really small we're still gonna come in and vary the colour we're using just a little bit what we're doing is we're looking backwards and forwards between um, our painting and the sort of reality the the reference and we're deciding on you know where do we what do we want to do based on what our painting looks like now which features do we want to take out of the painting and which do we want to um, just invent or move or so I'm taking ideas of shadows ideas of windows and just popping them in gently So this is the tower just to the right of the sail. Just a few little details to sort of resolve it. of detail here but also leaving some of this light coming through now really it's all about these shadows as well around these big buildings and don't overdo the detail just pick the details which seem really important to nail what's what's kind of going on rather than worrying about getting every little detail in so for me in this tower it's these two so idea of some vertical lines and these little windows then above it just a little cone almost of I'm not sure that's the right word little little belt there we go and then it's more about the shadow and there's deep shadow on this side and here which we can sort of gently wash away and then there's another stripe of shadow another stripe but as we get on this side it becomes much fainter because of how much light there is maybe we need to just enhance that again a bit we'll do that with some of the shadow colours we've been using
Okay, we're very almost there. So what we're going to do with our tower, I think it's just got some interesting shape to it already. And now we can just add suggestions of lines, nothing more than that really. And a few going across. Just something which sets the sort of perspective of a, a 3D object. And it's getting there, little by little. We're moving closer. So a couple of obvious things to do. We've got the, the boat. We've also got this, this sort of shoreline. And I'm going to go for a mix of Quinacridone Siena and Quinacridone Gold. And I'm actually going to change a bit of yellow, I think. So Indian yellow. Just to get these idea of rocks in here. And then just keep changing between mixes. want something definitely different, something which the eye immediately knows is, isn't is the sort of already painted wall, which is why I've gone for a different colour. And then I'm going to add some um, indigo and we're going to go this time with the real darks underneath that, in between it, again just getting that shape. In places it's really dark, in places we want to leave it light, almost absent of colour. And then, as with all these things, we'll go back in with a clean brush and we're going to move and soften things. Move and soften. In places where it's in shadow, we can darken it and really blend it into those shadows. Places it's in light we can pull out even more light. Just bring it to the edge of our as yet unpainted sailboat. Just going to define some of these walls a little bit with tiny suggestions of detail. It's just a little loose mix of that darker colour I've just been using. And we could pop some light colours in there if we wanted as well. Just maybe a little touch of yellow here and there. And of course just soften and soften. Okay, so how are we doing? So we've got a lot of shape now, haven't we? That This whole background, and it's all just background, has got a huge amount of shape. So let's see if we can keep that theme going with our lovely boat. So we've got a very dark sail, haven't we? So I'm going to stick with the same colours we've been using. Perlene, violet, indigo, and the boat. Even though the sail looks dark throughout, it's kind of still got variation in it. So just gently does it. And it's split into two sails as well. So we've got a sort of front area and a back area. And if we just leave them separate to start with. And you can see we've got a slightly different mix in each as well. And we can come back in with our clean brush. And that's when we can generate this shape, this graduated wash. Because it really gets quite light actually at the front of this sail. And then in places they really blend together, you can't see the difference. So we can bring that out by blending them together in places and leaving them very apart in others. And then just popping into there bit of a structural line at the front. Now we're just trying to get the right kind of shape for the lower half as well, which is 
kind of another of these neutralist shadow colors. So I'm going to just utilize some of the colors we've used up in our, well, the rest of the painting really, these sort of browny colors. And then we can touch in some neutral tint there. We've got the shape about right, and then I know it's all sort of dissolved into nothing at the moment, but bear with me. Again, it's one of these things where you just got to sort of trust that although you're doing things which seem to be going in a backwards direction, there is direction. So, in here, we've got all sorts of little details and people to add which will suddenly make that boat sort of fill up and seem more real then up here we can add these details at the top this sail comes down it covers the front front of the boat and then we can bring out the top edge of the boat again so it's just step by step and then the bottom edge of the boat as well because that's another area which is really dark And of course there's little bits of writing on there isn't there so we can we can even add that and we're very almost done so what's left well there's a couple of little touches of interesting color so if i just pick out my red we can add those in little little red lines going around this sail and they're barely visible but they're definitely there and they're more visible when we get to this light bed at the front of the boat then we've got a couple of people they can easily just be suggested with this same red and we can just touch that red in a couple of other places and even bring it into these reflections it just brings things to life, makes it more sort of with us. And perhaps the last thing I'm going to do is just take a touch of this blue and just touch it around the boat. Give a little bit of movement to the edges of the boat. Okay, and there we are, that is our little boat scene, Mediterranean boat scene, with some lovely light in the sky, a lot of interesting shadows, very little detail but plenty to get shape and interest going on in the background. Let's see what it looks like of course when we remove our masking tape. there you go I hope you've enjoyed that we've done a little boat we've practiced shadows you practice light we've practiced pulling out this light in the sky and the water got a lot of life and movement in with a nice relaxed style of watercolor painting I hope you've enjoyed it if you have please do let me know in the comments like subscribe is always you know always welcomed um, and I hope you have a good rest of your day